What's up, NFL fans? Welcome back to the channel, Revis Talk Sports. I am back again with my weekly NFL spread picks. For those who are new to the channel, I make weekly prediction videos along with money line and spread picks videos. But in this video, I will be talking about my week eight spread picks. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. With the first game that we have is the Baltimore Ravens versus the Cleveland Browns. This is a nice classic divisional matchup. The Ravens, great chance that they're coming into this game without Marlon Humphrey and Zay Flowers and the the Browns will be with a new quarterback. Look like they're rocking with Jameis Winston at quarterback now that Deshaun Watson is out for the season. The line is around eight. Definitely a bit high for a divisional matchup, but with reason. The Ravens have been looking hot consistently on a week-to-week -week basis. Meanwhile, the Browns season is pretty much done. The one concern that I have about the Ravens, even though that they are the better team offensively, is their pass defense. And I don't know about you, but I actually trust Jameis Winston throwing the ball than I do with, with Deshaun Watson. Don't know if it'll be a close game or not, but with a puncher's chance, just airing the ball out with a potential backdoor cover, I like the Browns plus eight. I think at home, a plus eight, the Ravens are on a nice high. They've been on a nice winning streak going into a divisional matchup with Jameis Winston at quarterback, who isn't afraid to throw the ball and kind of just throws Hail Mary balls here and there. But I like the potential of Jameis Winston finding his way through this Ravens pass defense. The Ravens are going to win outright. That's without a doubt. But I like a potential backdoor cover of Winston just airing the ball out on this suspect Ravens secondary especially without Mark especially with Marlon Humphrey questionable who may not play I like the puncher's chance of covering this eight give me the Cleveland Browns plus eight Tennessee Titans versus the Detroit Lions the Titans season is pretty much cooked and the Lions are really hot they dismantle the Cowboys. They won a nice divisional game against the Minnesota Vikings. The Lions are around 11 and a half, 12. For my liking, I'm not a big fan of double digit spreads, whether it's 10 or high. So this is probably gonna be a part of one of the teasers that I'm gonna have for this video. So I'm gonna put a six point teaser to this Detroit Lions game. I'm gonna choose the Detroit Lions. I'm gonna take it from 11 and a half from what I see down to five and a half. I feel much comfortable with the Lions winning by two field goals or more at home because the Lions are very dominant at home. Do not think the Titans keep this game close. I do think that the Lions can beat this Titans team by two or three possessions, but from a comfortability standpoint, especially if you're trying to take some a little bit of profit and feel comfortable with a teaser parlay, I feel comfortable teasing it down to a minus five and a half. So give me the Detroit Lions minus five and a half, in which we will compare that to another team in this video. Green Bay Packers versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Both teams should be coming to this game very healthy. There are not too many questionable injury tags on the Packers side. And I do know that Jaguars will be bringing some key members to this game. I think ETN, their left tackle. So both teams should be really healthy for this game. A lot of people are saying this could be a potential trap game. I really don't see it. The only way that I don't see the Packers covering this for are a few reasons. They allow Travis Lawrence to air the ball out and McKinney, Evan Williams, or Bullard cannot just catch up to Brian Thomas Jr. They get ran all over by Etienne and Bixby. And Jordan Love has a really bad game and this team lose a turnover battle. So I feel like a lot of things have to go wrong for this Packers team not to even cover four points against the Jaguars. The Jaguars are honestly one of the worst teams in the NFL. They've gotten a few wins in the season, but I'm not a believer in this Jaguars team keeping it close against a Packers team that embarrassed the Cardinals at Lambeau Field and made C.J. Stroud very uncomfortable. This Packers defense is legit. Now, how hot can this offense stay without Jordan Love making any key mistakes? That's going to be very key, but I think they'll keep a clean game. They know that this could be a potential trap game, and they can't come into this game very lightly to a hungry Jaguars team that doesn't want to go and like end the season on a bad note, but don't see a way of this Packers team not covering this four. Give me the Packers minus four. I think they could win this game comfortably. It could be a little close during the first half. I think they pull away in the second half. So give me the Packers minus four. Indianapolis Colts versus the Houston Texans. The Colts and the Texans really seem to battle it out during the season. Um, nice divisional matchup. CJ Stroud had a very terrible game at Lambeau Field, and the Colts have been looking all right. I mean, they they had Joe Flacco through a good part of the season, um, but with these two, 
Don't know how I feel about taking the Texans minus five. I do think they win outright, but with the Colts and Texans, it's very up in the air of how things can go, especially with no Shane Steichen. He's a great play caller. He can probably find some ways against this Texans defense, and the Texans defense love to blitz, but then if Anthony Richardson is healthy and playing this game, I can see his dual threat ability escaping the pocket and getting some extra yardage through, the, through his legs, but don't see the... Colts winning outright, but I like the Colts in a teaser play that I have. So I'm going to give it an extra three points on this five. I like the Colts at a plus eight. I'm going to add this to another teaser leg that I like during this weekend. It's not going to be with the Lions. It's going to be with a different team. So I'm going to tease up the Indianapolis Colts at a plus eight parlayed with another team that we will discuss later on in this video. New York Jets versus the New England Patriots. Right now, the line is at seven. I really do believe that the the Jets should beat the Patriots by a touchdown. I don't think there's much discussion from this game, nor will I be someone that will probably bet on this game. But I think the Jets should win comfortably against a Patriots team. Yes, they have Drake May. I think he will have um, certain moments through this Jets defense that hasn't looked the best during the season. So I can see Drake May looking good through, through the game, but I just don't see the Jets not covering this spread of at least a touchdown. Give me the Jets minus seven. I think they obviously win this game outright. They should be win they should be able to win this game by at least 10 points or more. Give me the Jets minus seven. Philadelphia Eagles versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Both teams are on a two-game winning streak. So it's definitely going to see who's going to break this streak. On the Bengals side, I do see Joe Burrow shredding this Eagles pass defense, especially with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I do see that Joe Burrow will find his way through this Bengal with through, through this Eagles defense. Meanwhile, I do see this Eagles offense with Hertz, Barkley, AJ Brown, Smith. I do see them going and shredding this subpar Bengals defense. I think this game could be back and forth, but Right now, to me, the Eagles are the better team this season. So I like the Eagles at the plus three spot. Um, I don't feel too convinced that the Bengals should be three point favorites favorites over the Eagles. Um, I don't think I can choose them as favorites over the better team right now, especially since the Bengals, most of their wins have gone against subpar teams. So I like the Eagles plus three. I think they could pretty much win this game outright, but give me the plus three. I think they could cover this three and keep this game close and, and obviously potentially keep this win this game outright. Atlanta Falcons versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Atlanta Falcons are probably one of the most Jekyll and Hyde teams in the season. You get They look good. They look bad. They look good. They get bad. So I have a very hard feeling about this Falcons team. Now on the Buccaneers side, they lost Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Godwin is gone for the season, but Evans will be gone for some quite, for quite some time. Um, so this is a divisional matchup. I, me personally, I actually think it would be a close game. I don't have a good feel about the Falcons team, but then the Buccaneers don't have much to play with to win this game outright, but it's a divisional game. You don't know. Baker is probably the better leader and probably can boost his team up than Kirk can, but I don't feel comfortable choosing a minus two and a half, nor do I feel comfortable choosing the plus two and a half. This is going to be teased with the Detroit Lions minus five and a half. So give me the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at plus eight and a half. I think they can cover for those who are very bold. By all means, if you're very, very bold, take the Bucks plus two and two and a half. Don't feel comfortable with that. Um, but I like the Buccaneers at plus eight and a half. So with the Lions minus five and a half and the Buccaneers plus eight and a half parlayed, that will give you an odd of minus 128, which isn't too bad for a six-point teaser for both of those games. So I feel comfortable with the Buccaneers plus eight and a half tease with a Lions minus five and a half. So that will be my first teaser parlay. Arizona Cardinals versus the Miami Dolphins. The Cardinals are another team that's pretty much inconsistent. They win games where you don't expect them to win. Um, but then they lose games where you kind of think that they could, they probably could have won. Don't think the Cardinals are going to win this game. The Cardinals haven't won back-to-back -back games in, in a few years, and the Miami Dolphins do get Tua Tagovailoa back. So I do see that that will be a boost for Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and A-Chan to shred this Cardinals defense. 
the Cardinals aren't going to win. I think the Dolphins should cover this minus four and a half four and a half comfortably win by a touchdown or more don't have don't have i don't honestly don't see a chance of this cardinals team keeping it close against the dolphins at miami with tua coming back spreading the ball out to hill and activating waddle in the receiving group so give me the miami dolphins minus four and a half buffalo bills versus the seattle seahawks the bills are now on their fourth row game in five weeks and the Seahawks got a nice win against the Atlanta Falcons at Atlanta, and they come back home. This game's going to come down to who has the better run game, who is going to make the more explosive plays, and who can, I don't want to say score points, but who can make the most out of their possessions. To me, personally, I'm probably going to choose the Bills minus three. The only way that I see the Seahawks Beating the Bills is if they rely on the run game a lot. Both of these teams have subpar run defenses. So um, the the Seahawks are ranked last in run play percentage. I do not expect them to automatically just shred their playbook and expect to run the ball the whole entire game. They're going to have to throw the ball at some point against the Bills. The Bills have a pretty decent defense. Um, but... I don't see the Seahawks beating the Bills in their game. And when you try to beat the Bills playing their game, you end up shooting yourselves in the foot. But I think Josh Allen and his dual threat ability is a key part in this game. And I like the Bills run game against the Seattle Seahawks defense than I do with the Seattle Seahawks run game against the Bills defense. The Bills are one of the most run heavy teams in the NFL. I do expect them to keep the ball on the ground, cut the clock out and make the more explosive plays than the Seahawks, especially since they might be without DK Metcalf. But me personally, I like the Buffalo Bills minus three. The New Orleans Saints versus the LA Chargers. Right now, the line is at seven. Give me the Chargers minus seven. No faith in the Saints team, especially the run now with uh, Spencer Rattler going against this Chargers team. And the Chargers team is going to run the ball all over the Saints. J.K. Dobbins is probably going to have two rushing touchdowns and probably I won't be surprised if Vidal has one or two himself, but the Chargers are going to run the ball down the Saints' throats. No way they keep this game close. Give me the Chargers minus seven. Kansas City Chiefs versus the L Las Vegas Raiders. The Chiefs right now are at a nine and a half. Give me the minus nine and a half. I probably won't even touch this game, um, but I think... The Chiefs are just the overall better team. They're undefeated. There's no way they're going to lose against the Raiders. Don't see the Raiders keeping this game close within 10 points. The Chiefs got DeAndre Hopkins. The Chiefs defense is pretty much one of the most elite defenses in the NFL, and I do see them stopping Gardner Minshew. Now that they don't have Devontae Adams, I don't see the Raiders scoring much points against the Chiefs, and the Chiefs will find a way to not only win this game, obviously they're going to win this game outright, but beat this team by more than 10 points. So give me the Chiefs minus 9.5. I probably won't touch it myself, but Chiefs 9.5. Carolina Panthers versus the Denver Broncos right now is at 11. Um, don't know how I feel about choosing the Denver Broncos minus 11. I think that's a bit too rich for my liking with Bo Nix at quarterback. This is a teaser game that I'm going to combine with the Colts plus eight. Give me the Broncos plus eight. I'd rather tease it down under double digits, and I feel much comfortable with that. So with the Broncos, with the Broncos minus eight combined with the Colts plus eight, you have an odd of plus 147. I really like that. I think um, the Broncos can definitely beat this Panthers team by double digits, but I like it under double digits. So minus eight Broncos combined with a plus eight Colts, odds of plus 147. Those are two of my teaser parlays that I have for this week. Chicago Bears versus the Washington Commanders. Right now, the line is at three. It started off at one and now it's starting to go to three. So it looks like there's a lot of line movement that Jaden Daniels won't play this week. If Mariota is starting, I have full confidence in this Bears defense to not only win this game for them, but to shut out, shut down Mariota. Um, but give me the Bears minus three. I think Caleb Williams is starting to find his groove in the NFL. The Bears defense is very hot, and I don't have much confidence in this commander's team without Jaden Daniels playing. Based on what I see right now, I don't see that he's playing. They haven't ruled him out just yet. But if he is rolled out and Mariota is rolling out, I like the Bears minus three. Dallas Cowboys versus the 49ers. Right now, the line is at four. It's up in the air of how the injury report is looking. 
Um, the Cowboys are coming off their bye, and the 49ers have lost two straight at home. The Cowboys are probably motivated to beat San Fran at San Fran, but I don't have much. I don't think the San Fran 49ers will lose three straight at home. So me personally, the 49ers will win this game outright. And I think that the 49ers are probably pissed off that they lost two straight and they don't want to lose to the Dallas Cowboys. I like the 49ers minus four. No matter how much movement, movement there is on the line, I think the 49ers run game is going to win this game for them and just roll over the Dallas Cowboys, force this one-dimensional Cowboys offense to throw the ball and have this 49ers defense make the plays to stop Dak. So give me the 49ers minus four. I feel a lot comfortable choosing the 49ers minus four than I do with the Cowboys plus four. So 49ers minus four. Last but not least, we have the primetime game, New York Giants versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. No faith and will I choose the Giants plus six. I think the, the Pittsburgh Steelers should win this game by at least a touchdown or more. So give me the Pittsburgh Steelers minus six. Don't have faith in Daniel Jones at quarterback, nor do I trust Daniel Jones and Dave on primetime. This will probably be an ugly game. Russell Wilson looked really good against the New York Jets, and the Steelers' defense is probably going to shut out this Giants offense. So give me the Pittsburgh Steelers minus six. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up and comment below on your week eight spread picks. Thank you so much and catch you guys next week.